Okay, this video is to document what I found with a battery drain issue on a 2013 Mini Cooper S model. Uh, for what it's worth, this is a convertible, an R57 model with the N18 engine. Uh, so in this case, the customer, you know, their battery was dying. Uh, about two to three days, the battery be drained completely. Uh, what I found out was, well, first of all, so I got the vehicle, and then for any vehicle to check for a parasitic uh, draw or load, you want to disconnect the negative ter terminal from the battery, and in between the negative post of the battery and the now disconnected cable, you know, with your two leads of your multimeter, you can measure how much amperage is being drawn. Um, as a general rule of thumb for any vehicle, it should be below 50 milliamps or 50 thousandths of an amp. Um, and that's after about one hour as you wait for all the electronic modules to go to sleep. So in this vehicle, what I determined was normal was, uh, you know, it draws, actually when you shut off the vehicle and walk away, it draws quite a bit of amperage, about four and a half amps. Then it'll drop down to about three eighths of an amp. And then it'll draw, drop to a quarter amp. And then eventually it'll settle in at a, really low amperage, uh, maybe 10 to 20 milliamps. So 10 to 20 thousandths of an amp. Um, so that's great. In my case, this vehicle was, it wouldn't drop any lower than 125 milliamps. So it's 0 0.125. Uh, uh, what I found was, you know, you start disconnecting the fuses, watching the multimeter, seeing uh, when the amperage drops. And in this case, pulling a uh, fuse number 49 in the interior on the passenger uh, kick panel. When I pulled uh, fuse 49, that um, dropped the amperage to where it should have been, about you know 10 to 20 milliamps. And again, anything below 50 milliamps is acceptable. Uh, looking at the wiring diagram for fuse 49, um, it, it uh, powers solely the amplifier for the stereo. And I have it laying here on top of the engine. And uh, at least on an R57 model, it's located underneath the driver's seat. So you're gonna need a, a set of Torx bits to remove the seat, undo the wiring harness for the seat, and then pull the seat out of the vehicle. And then you'll see the panel where this uh, uh, amplifier sits. Um, I believe in an R56, it sits in the driver, or maybe the, uh, it's either the driver or the passenger rear quarter panel, just inside the hatch. But uh, at least this being a convertible, this is underneath the driver's seat. And, you know, looking at it, um, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures. Yeah, you can kind of. Anyway, kind of looking down on the circuit board, there is quite a bit of corrosion on the circuit board. Uh, no doubt from maybe a spill drink by the driver's seat whatever it might have been. Uh, there's no liquid inside this, but I'm guessing that's been there for a while. But sure enough, I saw that corrosion on the circuit board and I started thinking, well, I bet you this amplifier is definitely faulty. Um, I replaced it with an another uh, model or another uh, amplifier. I stuck with the same uh, model number, that HS9599. I'm not sure if you have to stick with that because I know there's also an HS9598 variation. But anyway, uh, plug that in, um, worked great, no trouble codes, nothing weird. Um, I had to, obviously when you disconnect the seat, you probably want to have a scan tool on hand to help clear the codes. Uh, in my case, I'm using an Autel MX808 model, which is a fairly inexpensive one. So I, you know, clear the airbag light and, you know, hook the, went through that parasitic draw test again. And sure enough, it takes about 45 minutes to one hour, but it eventually dropped from uh, 4.5 amps to 0.375 amps to 0.25 amps to eventually down to about 10 to 20. I think it was like 15 milliamps. So that's great i'm very happy with that um, again it takes a, about 45 minutes 45 minutes to one hour for all the electronic modules to fall fall asleep 
and uh, give you a true reading of what the parasitic draw is. But hopefully that helps somebody out there. Um, again, this I'm going to say that the root cause was not so much the amplifier becoming defective, but um, I'm going to say from uh, damage to the circuit board from water intrusion. Uh, again, my best guess is maybe a spilled drink by the driver's seat um, or whatever it was. But yeah, hopefully that is helpful to someone. Thanks for watching.